When you think of Canada's favorite critter, the beaver probably pops up because it's pretty much the animal superstar up there. But wait, there's a plot twist. In 2002, Canada was like, let's mix things up and also crown the horse, but not just any horse, the Canadian horse as a national treasure right next to Mr. Beaver. Even though the horse isn't hogging the limelight like the beaver, this move is a big deal in the grand scheme of Canadian vibes in history. The beaver, renowned for its industrious nature, has long been associated with Canada's landscape and identity. Its role in the country's early development as a valuable resource for fur trade and colonization is deeply ingrained in Canadian heritage. As a symbol, the beaver represents qualities such as hard work, resilience, and adaptability, reflecting the pioneering spirit of Canada's founders. In contrast, the Canadian horse holds a unique place in the nation's history, particularly within the context of agriculture, transportation, and military service. Bred for endurance and versatility, these horses played crucial roles in various aspects of Canadian life, serving as trusted companions to settlers and soldiers alike. Throughout Canada's history, both the beaver and the Canadian horse have faced challenges, including habitat loss, overhunting, and changes in societal needs. Despite these obstacles, both species have endured, symbolizing the resilience and tenacity of Canadian wildlife and culture. The official recognition of the Canadian horse as a national symbol underscores the importance of preserving not only the species itself, but also Canada's rich biodiversity and cultural heritage. It serves as a reminder of the vital role that animals have played in shaping the nation's identity and history. Moreover, the designation of the Canadian horse highlights the significance of indigenous breeds and their contribution to Canadian society. These horses have been integral to the livelihoods and traditions of indigenous communities for centuries, embodying a deep connection to the land and its resources. As Canada continues to evolve and embrace its multicultural identity, the inclusion of the Canadian horse as a national symbol reflects a broader commitment to diversity, inclusion, and environmental stewardship. In conclusion, the dual recognition of both the beaver and the Canadian horse as national symbols speaks to the multifaceted nature of Canada's identity and heritage. In many countries around the world, having an official national animal is a big deal. It's a symbol that reflects the values, culture, and identity of the nation. Interestingly, some countries have chosen rather unconventional creatures to represent them. Let's delve deeper into five of the weirdest choices. Firstly, Guten and Wales decided to embrace the mystical by selecting the dragon as their national animal. It's a legendary creature that's often associated with power and strength, adding a touch of fantasy to their national identity. Moving on to Iceland and Latvia, they opted for the griffin as their emblem. This mythical beast, with the body of a lion and the wings of an eagle, symbolizes courage and nobility, perhaps reflecting the aspirations of these nations. Then there's Scotland and Kazakhstan, both of which adopted the unicorn as their national animal. Despite being a creature of myth, the unicorn represents purity, grace, and untamed beauty, qualities that resonate with the spirit of these countries. Now let's talk about Singapore. They took it a step further by creating their own unique animal, the merlion. A fusion of a lion and a fish, the merlion embodies strength, courage, and the nation's maritime heritage. It's a symbol of innovation and creativity. Each of these unconventional choices may seem odd at first glance, but they hold deep significance for their respective countries. Back in 1964, the Singapore Tourism Board came up with a brilliant idea. They invented the Merlin. It's a unique creature that's half mermaid and half lion. The mermaid part represents Singapore being an island, while the lion part comes from the city's name, which means Lion City. A fascinating tidbit about the Merlion is that it's still under copyright protection by the Singapore Tourism Board. So, you can't just go around using it without permission, or you might face some consequences, like those gum chewers who got whacked with canes in the past. Speaking of lions, have you ever noticed how many countries use them as their national animal? England, Holland, Belgium, Sweden, 
The list goes on. It's quite interesting, considering lions aren't exactly native to those regions. The reason behind this lion craze dates back to the early days of Christianity. Books with illustrations of lions were brought to Europe from the Middle East, where lions were still roaming. Europeans found these majestic creatures fascinating, despite the less-than-stellar drawing skills of the time. So they started putting lions on everything. Flags, shields, you name it. The drawings may not have been the best, but they did the job. Lions became a symbol of strength, courage, and nobility, traits that many countries wanted to embody. Over time, the lion became deeply ingrained in European heraldry and symbolism. Even though lions weren't actually prevalent in Europe, they became a powerful symbol of royalty and bravery. And that's how a creature from the Middle East ended up becoming the unofficial king of European heraldry. When considering the national animal of the Canary Islands, it's natural to assume it's the canary, given the name's association with chirping birds. However, there's a captivating twist to this tale that unveils a rich historical background. The Canary Islands were originally named Insularia Canaria by the Romans, and later the English adopted the term Canary Islands because of its appealing sound. Yet, the true essence lies in the word Canaria, which actually translates to dog in Latin. This revelation adds a layer of intrigue to the island's identity, showcasing a connection to a different kind of creature altogether. Contrary to popular belief, the national animal of the Canary Islands isn't a melodious bird, but rather a faithful and devoted canine companion. This discovery paints a vivid picture of the island's landscape, where wild dogs roam freely, adding to its unique charm and character. Imagine the lush landscapes of the Canary Islands, dotted with friendly dogs exploring their surroundings, embodying a sense of freedom and vitality. It's a scene that captures the essence of nature's beauty and resilience. Now picture yourself faced with a decision. Would you prefer to reside in a place filled with cheerful canneries or in a land where loyal dogs roam? It's a choice that offers intriguing possibilities and reflections on the island's identity. On one hand, the melodious tunes of canaries evoke a sense of tranquility and harmony, creating an atmosphere of peace and serenity. On the other hand, the presence of dogs brings companionship, loyalty, and a sense of security to the island community. Each option presents its own unique joys and challenges, reflecting the diverse aspects of island life. Whether it's the soothing melodies of birdsong or the comforting presence of canine companions, the Canary Islands offer a rich tapestry of experiences for those who call it home. Beyond the surface, this choice symbolizes the island's embrace of diversity and the coexistence of different forms of life. It underscores the importance of respecting and cherishing the natural world in all its forms. In Venezuela, much like in Canada, the national animal holds a significant place in the country's identity. Here, it's not just any horse, but the majestic Venezuelan white horse. This noble creature has deep historical roots, serving as the trusted companion of Venezuela's national hero, Simon Bolivar. In official depictions, such as on the national crest and other government symbols, the horse was always portrayed galloping to the right, symbolizing strength, freedom, and progress. It stood as a proud emblem of the nation's spirit and resilience. However, the course of history took a turn with the rise of Hugo Chavez, a controversial Marxist leader. Upon assuming power, Chavez ordered a symbolic change. He mandated that all depictions of the horse should now gallop to the left, aligning with his socialist ideology. This shift in symbolism marked a significant departure from the past and reflected the ideological transformation sweeping across Venezuela. The decision to alter the direction of the galloping horse wasn't merely a superficial change, but carried profound political symbolism. It represented Chavez's vision for a new Venezuela, one rooted in socialist principles and revolutionary ideals. This move resonated deeply with his supporters and sparked debates across the nation about the direction of the country. Beyond politics, the story of the Venezuelan white horse is a testament to the power of symbolism in shaping national identity. It illustrates how animals can become potent symbols, 
carrying the hopes, dreams, and aspirations of a people. The horse's journey from galloping to the right to galloping to the left mirrors Venezuela's own journey of transformation and evolution. Today, the image of the Venezuelan white horse continues to evoke a sense of pride and belonging among Venezuelans. It serves as a reminder of their rich history, their struggles, and their unwavering spirit in the face of adversity. Whether galloping to the right or to the left, the horse remains an enduring symbol of Venezuela's past, present, and future. In Latin America, specifically Chile, there's an interesting twist with not one but two national animals, the condor and the huemul, a deer-like creature. It's quite common for countries to choose animals like deer to represent them. What's unique about Chile's national animals is that on the country's crest, they're both depicted wearing little crowns. It's a charming sight, seeing them looking regal and majestic in their own way. This just goes to show that the world of national animals is vast and full of surprises. There are so many fascinating creatures out there, each with its own story and symbolism. If you know of any other quirky national animals, or if you feel a special connection to one, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And hey, if I've poked fun at your national animal, please don't take it too seriously. After all, who's to say a beaver or a horse is any better? We're all in this together. National animals hold significant cultural and historical importance. They often symbolize a country's values, heritage, and identity. Take, for example, the United States with its national animal, the bald eagle, representing freedom and strength, or Australia with the kangaroo and the emu, symbolizing resilience and progress. But sometimes, a country's choice of national animal can be unexpected or even amusing. Consider Bhutan and Wales with their mythical dragons, or Scotland and Kazakhstan with the unicorn. These choices reflect cultural beliefs and legends, adding a touch of whimsy to national symbolism. In some cases, national animals are deeply ingrained in folklore and tradition. Ireland, for instance, is often associated with the shamrock, a symbol of luck and prosperity. Similarly, Japan's national animal, the tanuki, is a mischievous creature from folklore known for its shape-shifting abilities. National animals can also serve as ambassadors for wildlife conservation. Countries like India, with the Bengal tiger as its national animal, prioritize conservation efforts to protect endangered species and their habitats. Overall, national animals are more than just symbols. They're a reflection of a nation's identity and values. Whether mythical or real, these creatures unite people and celebrate the rich tapestry of life on Earth. Now, I'd love to know, which national animal is your favorite? If you found our exploration of national animals interesting, please comment, like, and subscribe.